California, stay away from here. Stay away from here now. Don't, don't, don't come in here. Whatever you hear, stay away. John Doe has the upper hand. What's in the box? Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Pierre Cords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, welcome to another edition of What's in the Box. Don't look at the box, man. What's in the box? But as always, before we get to the box, let me talk at you. First off, I got a package like a day or two ago. Very small package. Had a couple of things in it. I went ahead and opened it up because... It wasn't much, and I didn't have anything really made to show. Okay, let's see. Uh, like we always do. All the new subscribers, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What these videos are is I often order stuff, paracord related most of the time. I sh do a box opening on camera, talk about it, talk about why I got it, this, that, my thought processes. Um, I show the things I've made since the last video, if I still have them, a lot of stuff gets mailed out. Um, and then I just talk about, you know, what's going on in my little corner of the Pericord world. I do color comparisons. That's one of the things I do. So if there's a color that you want to see, let's say I explain it. I, I try to explain this, and I'm not, let's see. I've said this, and I'll say it again. You go to a Paracord Supply Company's webpage, and they're going to have a picture of whatever the color is. And due to camera, camera angle, lighting, all that kind of stuff, that picture may or may not be a true representation of what the color is going to look like when you get it in your hand. All right? Okay, so what I'll do when I get in new colors... Or when I, it doesn't have to be new colors for me. Just when I get in color, you know, cord, which I don't always order cord. Sometimes I order a whole lot of cord. Sometimes I don't order cord at all. And I get things other than cord. But when I get in cord, I will show it, the color of it, compared to similar colors that I already have under the same camera and the same lighting for you as the viewer. That way, if you have, like, say I've got three or four colors out here that I'm comparing, you as the viewer have one of them, you know what it looks like in your hand, and you can see the other two in comparison to it under the same lighting, if you're thinking about ordering these other colors. Does that make sense? Because, I'm going to just be honest with you, a lot of this peer recording is color, color theory you don't know anything about color theory, you never took a basic art class like in high school, freshman year in high school. Everybody had the weirdo art teacher. <laughs> I know we did. Ours was, she was a character. But, you know, all that comes into play, right? Okay, so with that said, that's one of the things I do. So if there's any colors out there that you want me to show on camera and compare, blah, 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 I'll do it. Just let me know. If I have the colors, which I have a, quite a inventory of colors, I'll show them. If not, I may end up ordering them. It may be something I've been wanting to get, and I'll order it and do a color comparison. Okay, with that said, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. We're going to start off. I'll show you some of this stuff I got. Before we get to the package, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always got to do the shameless plug. Shameless plug. Stitched Anaconda. This one is here. Let's zoom in. So you can see it a little bit better. And, you know, Stitch and Anaconda. This one, you can't quite see it. You can see it over here a little bit better. Those two strands running up and down, that's the core strand. It's an independent core. Somebody was asking about that the other day. Independent core or a standalone core, uh, self-contained core. I've heard them called that. That's where the core strands themselves are the strands that come off of it are not part of the weaving strands of the bracelet. And on some bracelets, like this one, where they're exposed and you can see them, those two pieces of dark gray, it's called blackish gray, are seen, that gives you the opportunity of having those core strands that can be seen on certain weaves a different color than the rest of the colors of the bracelet. Make sense? All right? 
But that is a maroon, blackish gray, and then these little cross pieces is, what is that, charcoal gray, and the stitching is smoke gray. All right, I've got a tutorial for this. I'll put it in the cards description below. Oh, I'll say this too. Always, always, any of my videos, not just these what's in the box ones, but any of my videos, tutorials, tip tricks, whatever, look in the description below. There will be links to stuff. Yes, it's playlists I've created on my channel. Sometimes I put links to other people's tutorial videos. Sometimes I put links to Instagram accounts. You know, if I mention it, I try to remember and put it in the, in the description below. I put links to all kind of stuff, right? So, you know, check that out. There may be something down there you find useful. Might be something, uh, just whatever. Always look at the, always look at the description of video. My videos especially. Um, but any, any video on YouTube, always look at the description. There may be links or maybe something there. Question you had may be answered in the description. Make sense? Okay. Now, with that said, um, there's that. Uh, this one, I don't have a tutorial for this. This is the basic trail bite that I've stitched, but it does come into play for some of this stuff I ordered. I made this in a, a while back, and it's just like a quote-unquote Molon Lab. I guess is how you pronounce it. M-O-L-O-N-L-A-B-E. Molon Lab. Basically, I, I put the link in the description below. What, Wikipedia page, go look it up. It basically, you see the movie 300? This is Sparta. Yeah, how he's like, you're not taking our weapons, we're, we're going to fight, blah, blah. Yeah, it's that mentality. You can pry it out of my cold, dead hands before I give you my weapon. Right? That's basically what Molon Lab is. That's, that's kind of the the intent behind it. Somebody the other day said, that, so it's a political statement. I said, no, not so much a political statement. If anything, it's a Second Amendment right statement. It's the right for me as a human being to defend myself against a threat. Whether it be physical threat, tyrannical threat, whatever. Makes sense? Okay. But, um... I ordered some of these in a, a while back on Amazon, and I got, how many was it, two of them, or three, I think it was two, it, it doesn't matter, I ordered a couple of them, and I got them, and they were, they were a little expensive, what it is, is a shank button, let's see, if I can put it up here, so you probably can't see, it's, it's kind of got like a little inverted V on it, or an upside down, or a chevron shape, for those military people, you can kind of see it. But that's what it that's what it is. But it's a shank button. If you're not familiar, I'll show you in just a second. Um, oh wait, let me get one of them. I thought I had one sitting out. Hang on a second. Oh well, I can show you. If you're not familiar, with what a shank button is. In fact, I was at the I was at a fabric craft. It was a fabric store slash craft store last night looking and once again as always they have shank buttons but they do not have shank buttons with a large hole okay if you don't know you've seen uh, many in the pericle community you've probably seen these you may or may not n have known it was called a shank button at first i didn't know i looked it up and i found out okay that's what a shank button is that makes sense what it is it's like a button right round square whatever a button it doesn't have holes in it where you would sew it onto a garment. This one is more like you would have it on a, like a suit or a dress uniform where it has no holes. And how do you attach it? Via the shank on the back. See how it's got this paste that sticks out, right? Well, these have been. Des I'm going to assume, safe assumption. I I'm hoping that these were designed and made specifically for paracord. That hole right there in that shank, no, we're not talking about prison. Nobody's going to get stabbed or shivved here, okay? <coughs> but that shank has got a, the hole is big enough to fit two pieces of paracord through. Makes sense? Now, if you go to a fabric store, craft store, whatever, they sell shank buttons, more than likely you're not going to find one with the hole big enough to fit a piece of 550, let alone two pieces, because they're made for like your basic 
small cotton thread. Now you might find some <clears throat> that you could get a piece of micro cord through, perhaps two pieces of micro cord, but very rare. But I ordered some of these off of Amazon. Well, <clears throat> I found some on AliExpress. AliExpress, um, Chinese Amazon. You know, you got Alibaba, T Alibaba, I think is what it's called, Timu, Shine, Sheen, I don't know how you say it, and AliExpress. All these places. The only one I've ever used that I could speak anything about is AliExpress. I haven't had any issues with them. Um, takes you about two and a half, three, four weeks to get your stuff, but on the most part, it's cheaper than Amazon. And I haven't had any issues with the quality for the most part. I mean, you get, it's like anything. Most of what you order off of Amazon anyway, whether people realize, it's all made in China. People go, I'm not ordering from them. That's that Chinese made stuff. Well, guess what? Most of what you order from Amazon is made in China in the same factory where you're ordered, get ordered from AliExpress. It's the same stuff. You're just getting it a little bit cheaper, and it's taking you longer to get it. So, you know, there you go. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. But I ordered some I ordered some of these off of Amazon. And I found some equivalent. They're slightly smaller, like a millimeter smaller. I ordered some off of AliExpress, and I got them in the other day. Here's the one I had, and here's the one I, I ordered. You know, you, honestly, you can't see the difference in the size, but I'll show you a normal shank button. I showed these on one of the older videos, and I just had these sitting on my desk. They have the little Celtic heart knot. I ordered those simply because that's kind of my, I wouldn't say my logo or anything, but you see how it's got a shank on it also here. Let's move that, maybe you can see. It's got a shank on it also. But you see how the hole is a lot smaller. Now, I was able to fit two pieces of micro cord through this thing, as opposed to trying to hold these things so you can see through the hole. But you see, you know, you see how the hole. There we go. You see how the hole in this one is a lot bigger. It's more than likely because it was designed to be used with paracord. And this one is was not. But, you know, I could fit two pieces of micro cord to this one. You can fit two pieces of 550 through this one very easily. No problem. But I ordered, those come in the other day. I ordered a couple of them. And they came in, oh yeah, let me see. They, it was a deal. You got... I wanted it for this. That's what I wanted it for. But it came with these little doodads right here. Like a little Spartan helmet, you know, with the two two four millimeter holes in the top, which are kind of, you can't kind of, it's hard to say. There's a hole there and a hole there. Right? But that that's what came. That was one order. And I didn't really want these, but they were cheaper than the ones I got off of Amazon. So I ordered about six or seven of them for these. Now, I'll end up using these, I'm sure, for something. But, yeah. Okay, let's put these back in the box. Okay, I show, I show you that because I, um, I show you that first. Because I've been wanting to make a keychain to go with this bracelet, right? And I did. I made one the other day. Same colors. Maroon. Anthracite on the outer edge. That's that dark gray. And the lighter gray in the, in the middle section. Or closer to the center. Is smoke gray. And it's just done on two D-rings. And I've had. I've posted this. I'll explain this. I've posted this. Not this one, but one, something similar to this in the past, and it was, and I didn't put on there key, ch excuse me, keychain. I just put it, put it on there, and a couple of people were like, "What's it for? What are you going to use that for?" Okay, I'm gonna be nice about this. Think outside the box. A lot of what I do have done, learned, and things like that is is for me doing it, not for me watching 
videos and stuff like that. I just experienced 30 years doing stuff and hmm but a keychain like this these are D rings right it's flat here like think about it it looks like a D it's flat and then what a okay it's a keychain you can put a split ring on it now putting making a keychain on a D ring serves two purposes one one is this I do not recommend making a keychain and weaving it directly onto a split ring why because the seam where you separate it to put your keys on there can get twisted around and caught in these pieces of paracord you say you have keys on it or not on it you're trying to take keys off and put new keys on it or what it doesn't matter what ends up happening is if for whatever reason you need to get a key off of there or, or put one on there that split ring will get caught in that pericle, that seam, and you can't do it. And the only way to get to it is to cut it. I've learned through experience not to do that. Put a split ring straight onto the weave. So what do you do? You put it on a D ring or an O ring or whatever. Makes sense? Then you put your split ring onto this. That way your key fob, keychain, does not get ruined by that seen in the split ring. Make sense? Okay, the other reason, like I said, it serves two purposes. The other one is most of the time when you see a a keychain, I'm going to show you a basic one with no hardware. On it. Just a simple keychain. I'll, I'll get one in some bright colors so you can see it. Okay? Loop, where you attach your split ring. Or, uh, you know, you call it a zipper pull, you call it a um, a knife lanyard, whatever. But you put a, a split ring onto this. Then you got a snake knot. And you got these two strands, these two cords running as the core onto which you weave a four strand round braid. What is this? Acid purple and rose pink. And this is smoke gray. And then there's a di uh, snake knot and a terminating diamond knot, right? Okay. Most keychains you see are done in this fashion, where there's two pieces of 550 acting as core strands. And there's quite a few ways to do it. You know, a few different weaves and this and that. But let's just say you want to do something this, that has more than a two-string core, such as a four-string core, hence a D-ring on either end. You can attach these D-rings to your jig and do your setup a full core, four strand core between it and you could do a something a little more, something different that you don't normally see. See, the D-rings allow you to have a four strand core or a six strand core or you know, eight strand, ten strand, twelve strand, you know, twenty seven strand core. Oh my God, this is that wide. You see what I'm saying now? Think outside the box. Think outside the box. But that's what that is. Okay. Alright, let's put this back where it goes. Because this is that's a bag of stuff that's going somewhere. Okay, but I made that. I figured I would show you that. Because of the bead and I'd show you that. Okay, now let's see. What else have I made? <coughs> um, I'll show you these two. Let me, I'm going to back out just a little bit. I made one the other day. In one of the... Facebook groups that I was asked to admin in, I, sometimes when I know I'm going to do something and it's going to be one of these wowers, you know, that's going to take me a while or whatever, and it's got a whole bunch of cord or whatever, I usually take a picture of the setup and just post it and go, what is Tindall got himself tangled up into this time? You know, something like that, you know, some comical type thing. And then, you know, everybody's like, what is it? What's it going to be? Oh, it's going to... And then at the end, I'll when I finally fi finish it, I'll put on there what it was. You know, I'll put a picture. I'll make a new post for the picture, but in the comments of that one, I'll put whatever. Well, I did one like that the other day, and when I finally posted it, everybody was like, wow, that looks great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I told them, I said, how'd you get it to look like that? Even the man that bought it from me, he's a weaver. Doesn't do a lot of bracelets, but he does wraps. 
like around a bottle. You know, you'd say some of this nautical type themed stuff. But he was using paracord, wrapping these bottles, big, you know, 10 inch diameter like glass bottles and things like that in all these various colors of paracord. Outstanding work. And he got in touch with me. He said, man, he said, I want one of those bracelets like that. He said, I thought about trying to do it myself. He says, but I'm not much of a bracelet maker. I do wraps. He said, I see that you do it and you know how to do it. He said, I want one. I'm like, okay, no problem. And I told him, I said, look, I'm going to tell you, it's going to take me a little while to do this because of the nature of the way I do it. Because he did mention this. He said, he said, yours looks different than any other one I've ever seen of somebody doing this bracelet. He says, yours looks different. And I told him, I said, it's because I sit down and I take the time and I tighten it up. Every individual aspect of that knot, I tighten it up with a set of round nose pliers, right? So, with all that said, I'm going to show you two that I've made in the past that I still have, and then I'm going to put the picture of the one I made for him. Here's the first one. This one's on a one-inch buckle, right? It's the course, independent core string, eight-strand independent core, black, and this anthracite. It's hard to see on camera, but it's anthracite and it's stitched. It's got two rows of stitching in maroon, but it's a wide Bane's cuff. And that thing is hard. It's not all loosey goosey or whatever. Like I say, neat, clean, and tight, right? But that's one I've done, right? Okay, and here's one where you can see the colors a little bit. You can see the stitching on this one a little bit better. The core strand is maroon, olive drab. It's stitched right down here in maroon and then on this edge it's in maroon and you can see those core strands right there also All right, now I'll say this the way I've done this one I put on a three quarter inch buckle and this was for me I was messing around trying to figure out how to do this core strand I won't go into all the details it's probably going to be another video I've been asked to make but you can see how all these core strands are bunched up in that slot and for those who follow me I, I hate that but this is me and me. This I made this one a long time ago. Mm. So I tried another one, and this was a long time ago. I tried another one on a one-inch buckle, and it turned out a little bit better. But these last two strands, which were the, the ends of the core strand set up, the way they angle in there, I didn't like that. So the one I made the other day, which I'll show you a picture of in um, just a second, I did it differently right but here's a picture of it okay there's that alright um let's see get that out of the way let's see what else have I done I made I'll show you these I made these over the past couple of days for my collector friend in these colors he likes. I've done one. This is that black silicone buckle which I always talk about here. Let's see, do I have an example? Maybe you can see it right here. Even though this is a one inch buckle, this is a regular painted one compared to the silicone one. You see how the silicone one's less reflective? That's why I like it. It's stainless steel coated in silicone as opposed to like some zinc alloy that's been painted, right? And it has a it has a distinct feel to it. I mean, it feels like silicone when you touch it because it's silicone coated. But anyway, this is a hardcore conquistador. Stuff all down the side and the middle is, what is that, crocodile green. It, it, even though it looks very similar to a conquistador sort of it's not woven like a conquistador this one actually is a four strand cord that you weave onto as opposed to like a conquistador it's just not in and uh, you know it knots in and out of, uh, of itself and you just build on it and build on it 
right? Now, each one of each one of these knots is intertwined with a knot next to it, but it it's done on a core string. So, right? Okay, there's that one. Here's one I did earlier today. Actually, I started last night. And I finished it this morning. This one is midnight blue and anthracite, and I put this one on a navy blue silicone buckle. Right? And then the one I just finished just a little while ago, it's got dirt, not not dirt, but dust and lint all over it. But I did this in a blackout, meaning it's all black. One of my collectors, he loves that stuff when it's all black. And every now and then I'll come across one that will look that I think is going to look good doing it all black. Yeah. Alright, there's that. Okay, now, I did. I showed this. Let's see. I, I ordered these. This is something I ordered a while back. And I'm going to show this. I've showed this once, and I'm going to show it again. Why? Because some more of this hardware came in today. I made this one a while back. It's got a white brass, vintage brass, or yeah, white brass decorative rope thimble on it. This is, what is that? Black, and this is, em is it emerald green? I think it's what it is. Emerald green and passion pink. And then it's got this white brass. I think, actually, I think it's stainless steel is what it actually is. Like a dragon head bead. Okay, and I've mentioned this before, I think, in one of the other videos. But you see it's got two pieces of metal. Well, each of these pieces of metal has two holes. And they're labeled as three millimeter. Well, if you if you work at it, you can get a piece of four millimeter type three five fifty paracord through a three miller hole. Three millimeter hole. It can be done. And I said struggled with this. Because you can get it through this first hole, but trying to get it through the second one was not the easiest thing. And then there's two pieces, so there's two holes here, two holes here, right? And I, I did it and whatever, and I said I'm not doing that again. So I, I I sat down and I tried something. I was like, well, I bet you I can put a a piece of ninety five through there. Or no, this is micro cord. I got a piece of ninety five gray ninety five somewhere around here. I think I put it over here in my scrap being hand a second. Yeah, here it is, right here. Now I tried this. I tried. You see, here's your here's your loop. This was R and D, research and development. Here's your loop for your lanyard or your keychain or your zipper pull, or whatever snake knot. There's your two core strands, and here's another snake knot. And I was gonna slide that bead onto this, and it it went on there, right? And I, I, I was like, okay. But what I was trying with this specifically was to weave a four strand round braid with non gutted, regular old 550 cord using 95 as the core strand. It didn't turn out very well, it didn't look right. For any of you who knows, who's ever done a four-string round braid, it comes down to two factors play into it. What size cord are you using for the core strand directly affects what size cord you can use for the braid itself, or vice versa. How You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying... If you have 550 weaving, braiding cords, you have to have a 550 cord. That's not what I'm saying. But they have to be proportional and all this kind of stuff. Now, you can, you can gut these pieces of braiding cords and braid it around a two pieces of 550, and it looks great. You can have them like this, not gutted, and it works. But if you try to do it... Like, if you tried to use these two strand of 550 as a core, 
and do a four string round braid using micro cord, yeah, that does not look right. It, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't look right, right? So I tried to do this and my intent was, well, if I can put the four string round braid on two pieces of 95 core string, then I can definitely get this through the holes in this bead. Right? Well, I tried that. It didn't work. The braid didn't work right. So, I tried something else. I'll show you this. You can see. Okay? Here's the same, the same setup. The little thimble. Rope thimble. If you don't know, that's what that little thing's called. A rope thimble. Right? And it's a snake knot. But if you look right there, it's a very slightly different color. What that is is a piece of 95 that's anchored in that snake knot. And the two, not only do you have the two pieces of 550 running down through this acting as a core, you also have two pieces of 95. And what I was going to do was have them sticking out the end. Yeah, I'm covering it up on purpose. I was have the, I was going to end the 550 in the snake knot and then have the two pieces of 95 sticking out and attached the bead to it. And I made it and I did it. And when I got done, I tightened all that up on the end and still that, that dragon head bead, you see how it's kind of, yeah, this one's not so bad, but because of those, it, it was only attached to the weave itself with pieces in 95, it was all flippy and floppy, and I was like, yes, that does not work, so I cut it, and I did it again. A different way. Okay, now I'll show you. Here's some of the ones I ordered the other day. They come, okay, you saw the silver one. These are the ones I got just the other day. It's the same bead. It's just in a vintage brass or yellow brass look, right? Okay, if you look, you can see right here. You see how it's got two holes here and there's two holes here. Yeah. Those are three millimeter holes. Very tough to get a piece of 550 through one, much less going through both of them. Okay. But if you look, you can see it here on the front. There's a hole behind it in between, like, the mold of the dragon and where these little, this little piece of metal, where that is. You can see it better on the back, and the hole is bigger. You see right here? Hopefully that you can see what I'm talking about. So what I ended up doing is just doing the regular keychain, and I ran the two pieces of 550 through that, and I terminated them with a snake knot right in here, which that snake knot, uh, uh, two pieces of 550 making a snake knot does not quite fit in between these two pieces very good. So it's not the prettiest thing, but the display side looks great. That back side with that snake knot, that terminal snake knot is? Yeah, it's not the prettiest thing, but I'll show you. I've had so many people comment on this thing, and it does. It looks good. It, it looks really good. <coughs> but I'm going to do some more of these in some different colors. This is Stealth Olive, which is very, very, it's almost black, but it's got a green, green hue to it. And then this is olive drab and moss. And there's the bead. But that thing looks outstanding. I had I had two different people describe it using the word sexy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, keychain being sexy. But I guess so. I mean it's it's yeah, it does. But it's got a snake knot right here, and then there's another snake knot right here. And like I said, That snake knot, it's kind of hard to see because it's black and the lighting and all that. But that snake knot right there is not the prettiest snake knot. But it's on there. It's not coming off. But that thing looks good. I want to do another one. Now it's not wanting to focus. I want to do another one. I'll do this in the different colors. I was thinking about I'm sure it can be done. In more than two colors, I'm, I'm sure you could take where the olive drab is, use two pieces, two separate colors, and then where the moss, the lighter color is, do that in two pieces of micro. So you'd have four total. 
But yeah, that'd probably be a pain to weave it because you'd always have to make sure that the cords. This color was always on this side, and this color was always on this side when, out of those two. And then the two over here, this one's always on this side, and this one's always on this side. That way it remains consistent throughout the weave. And that's probably going to be more of a pain in the butt that I want to deal with. But that thing looks really good. But that, that's some of the stuff I got the other day. Some, br some yellow brass ones, I guess. Those look good, too. But my my idea is maybe like a golden rod, and I got I got a color in the box that I think may look go with this. If not, golden rod or gold, you know. Okay, there's that. Okay, let's see. What's the other thing? Uh, that's all of the stuff I made, I think. But I ain't gonna show you this. This has to do with what I've got in the package. I, I, I mentioned, I think I mentioned this. I ordered some stuff. I want to learn how to do dog leashes, certain kinds of dog leashes. You'll see these people, and they'll use, Paracord EU calls it dog leash rope, made out of different materials, you know, whether it be polyester, nylon, or whatever. And they've got it in 6 millimeter. 8 millimeter and 10 millimeter. Well, I've ordered the 10 millimeter. I, I've looked around, looked at everybody's work, and this and that, and it seems to me that the nylon 10 millimeter is the most, most, you know, popular one. I, and I look through all the different colors, and that seems to be like if you go to a Paracord Supply place and you look at their 550, how many colors they got compared to like. 425, 325, how many colors they've got of those, microcore, 95, whatever, you're going to find that 550 has the most color varieties. Why? Because that's the most popular cord used for the most part. So I did the same thing with this dog leash rope. I was like, well, which one's got the most color options? 10 millimeter nylon. So I ordered some to practice on. And what I want to learn how to do is this multi-colored whipping. Now this, I know how to do like a single strand whipping on a thing. I've done it, no problem. I tried to do a two strand micro cord whipping around the two pieces of 550 core. It looks okay. It's a little bumpy and lumpy. Like you can see it right here. What that is, I don't know how well you can see those colors. Acid purple, turquoise, and passion pink. The same pink that's in that. But it turned out okay, but it's, you look at this part right here where it's, it's whipped around it. It's a little lumpy and bumpy. So that's something I need to work on. But I did this in preparation for what I want to do. That's the way I want to do some of these dog collars. I'm going to put a picture up here so you can see this. Um, this picture comes from an Instagram account called The Brass Spaniel. Check this out. Okay, you see that? Yeah, that's what I aspire to be able to do. That. That looks so awesome. You know, I see some of these people make these dog leashes and they'll use pieces of 550 and they braid it, you know, a herringbone braid, a five strand, six strand, wapple knot, or whatever, you know, whatever. And what, and then they put a big diamond knot on the end with the, the D ring and the snap hook and all that. And those look great. Don't get me wrong. Those look great. But what I want to learn how to do is that in that picture I just showed you. Now, I know I'm not going to immediately be able to do that, but I, that's what I'm hoping to learn and slowly. So I bought me some practice materials in the attempts of making and I bought the end caps of swivel snap hooks and all that kind of stuff and attempts to, you know, make one for the couple of dogs we have. Just make some leashes in some various colors, right? But I sat down last night and kind of messed around and did this. Oh, and this is a titanium bead. With, it's supposed to be purple. I've used these beads before. Yeah, 
it's not got this camera just won't focus very well. But it's supposed to be purple in there. When in fact it's more of a a magenta kind of look. It matches that passion pink. It does, on camera it doesn't quite match it very well, but to my naked eye it does. It's because the camera is getting confused between the turquoise and the passion pink. So it's it's obscuring what these two colors look like because they're so close together. Maybe you can see it better that way. But, yeah, there you go. That, that was me messing around. Like I said, I got to work on that. I know it's not perfect. It looks pretty good, though. But it's tight. Don't get me wrong. It's tight. It's just lumpy and bumpy. But, anyway, there's that. Okay, so, that's what else did I get from that little small package the other day? I ordered some of these. I've seen these before, a little brass snake head bead. It's got two four millimeter holes in the back. And if you can look at this here, I've got one yeah, I've got one right here. I can show you better right here. The two holes go in the back and they come out the sides of the mouth. But it also it also if you look at it, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera or not. Let me see if I can get it. You can see Right, right up above, right there, down inside that mouth, there's another piece. Well, what it is, is the, the, the fangs in the front and that piece in the back act as a, a circle where you can, you can run a piece of cord through it that way or a shackle or, you know, something. You can, there's options. Now, I don't know exactly how you'd want to do that, how you could do that. I guess it's possible. It may be pretty hard to do. Well, I'm thinking. I don't know. But that that's what that is. But I ordered some more of these because I made a couple of keychains with these. And yeah, they 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 were liked. They were well received. So I ordered some more of those. That was just kind of like a re up. I ordered this because I wanted this, a biohazard sign. Just old standard cheap brass bead. I, I got a couple of these. Um, these rope thimbles, these, some of these ones I've ordered in the past, the first ones I ordered were brass. And I got them. And I was like, man, they got to have some silver looking ones. Well, I found silver ones. And, you know, you've seen them. You, you've, you've seen them. This, this keychain here, and then the other one, it had a brass. It's got a silver one, right? Silver one, right? Okay. Well, I, I ordered these the first time, and then I found the silver ones, so I ordered some silver ones. Well, when these finally showed up, before these, I ordered these, they showed up. Then I ordered these, and before they showed up, I went ahead and ordered some more of these. Right? But now that I, they've both showed up and I've got them in hand, I noticed the size is different. So, since I have went back, because these were relatively cheap. You order them, you get five of them. And the description, I should have read it, the description on the site says, gives you dimensions. They both came from AliExpress from two different shops or two different stores. This one, the dimensions that they give in the description is different, and they also sell the brass ones, but they're bigger. Now, I've ordered more of these silver ones and some of the brass ones. Those brass ones haven't gotten here yet. So hopefully when they do show up, I'll have both silver and brass in this size as opposed to these tiny ones. Make sense? Okay, there's that. Alright, I ordered these in the past. I haven't used them yet. But I ordered this stuff going, yeah, I'll use it just to make some decorative thing, but I got so much that I have to make to fill orders. I don't have time to just play around. Most of my R&D is that. R&D is trying to figure out how to do something so I can make it for a customer. But I ordered these, what is this supposed to be, a, a bird skull, a raven skull, crow skull, it's a bird skull, right? 
on a little shackle. And first, the only ones I could find were the yellow brass, vintage brass. And those are nice, but I'd rather have silver, preferably. So I found some that are slightly different, and they're made out of silver. Now, the, the shape of the skull is a, the look of the skull is a little bit different. You know, slightly different, but it's still the same motif. Okay, there's those. All right, so let me put this stuff back so that all my little parts don't get lost. Let's see, that doesn't go in here. None of goes in here. None of that goes in here. But, okay, that goes in there. We'll put that in there. We'll put that in there. Oh, goodness. That would not be good. Let's not knock that over. Okay, the rest of that is going to go back here. Give me a second. This is how I keep up with my stuff. You know, I'll pull it out to show you. It goes there. It goes there. Where is this? It goes there. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I bought me a couple of new little storage containers last night, so I kind of shifted things around, kind of reorganized some of my inventory, and now I was like, where did I put it? I can't remember where they're at. Okay, now, with all that said, the box. We'll get to the box. How long have I been talking? Okay. Let's open this thing up. the invoice. It's quite a lot of stuff. stuff. Get this out of the way, that out of the way. Okay. Wow. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. I got I got all kind of stuff. Most of it is dog leash type stuff. So I guess let's see, I'll show you this. This right here. I I've mentioned this maybe, I don't know. This is this is four twenty five. Black 425. It's like you got 550, 425, 325, 275, 95 micro cord, nano cord. This is 425. It's three millimeters as opposed to four millimeter. Um, and I bought it to see if it would work with these three millimeter hole beads. So, and I didn't, normally normally when I buy a cord, I buy no less than, this is Paracord EU, so it's gonna be in meters, but no less than 100 feet or 30 meters, right? Yeah, that's going to go through there. The end of that's been burnt and it's mushroomed out. But this is not, this is not, what is this? 10 meters. So that's about 30 feet, give or take. Let's cut the end off where it's mushroomed. If I could taper it down. Really? Hey, give me a piece of this. Give me a second. That's all this is. This is R&D right here. You're seeing R&D live on camera.
I just said to somebody this morning, I do it that way to taper the end of it. I don't cut mine at an angle and burn it. I don't do that. Every now and then I'll do that trying to get a cord through a hole, but I don't do it when I go to put it in a needle. Yeah, it works on that. Yeah. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it'll go through there. Where's my... It's gonna go through there. It's just gonna be. It's gonna take a little effort to get it to go through there. Yeah, that was a lot easier than trying to get that piece of five fifty that through there. That was, oof, that was a task in and of itself. But yeah, that's what I got that for. To see if I could get it to go through there. And I'm probably... And then now I'm going to use this 425, which is 3 millimeters, as opposed to the 4 millimeters. And how I was saying, make a full string round braid around smaller cord. I'm going to use it. I'm gonna, all this is going to be R&D. I'm going to sit down and just kind of fiddle with some of this and see. But that right there works. I can get that through there. All right? Okay, there's that. Let's, now I can't I can get it through there, but you can't get it out. There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's put that back in this box. That's what that is. That's black 425 right there. Here, let me burn the end of this before it starts getting frayed. Okay, shoot that off to the side. Get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, there's that. Alright, now, this is simply a refill. This is a, what is this, 300 foot spool, I think is what it is. Or, I say 300 feet, it's 100 meters. Yeah, a hundred meters of black. Not they have two kinds. They have black and carbon black. This is black. Let's get that out of the way. We'll sit that over here to the side. Okay. I bought some more. Here, let me go through this while I'm doing this and mark off this stuff to make sure it's all there. There's that. There's that. This is black silicone 20 millimeter. Now, three quarter inch equivalent. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. I, I figured if I'm ordering stuff, might as well order a couple of these buckles. I'm not quite to the point of having to have some, but if I'm ordering stuff, I'll usually order five, ten of these or some of these small ones. I've got plenty of these small ones, and plus, they're out of them right now. But anytime I order stuff, I throw a couple of these in there just to have. That way I, I, I don't run out. Okay, there's that. Let's see, what is that? 
black silicone 20 millimeter safe lock buckle mark that one off okay there's that okay this I don't use these I used one the other day but I don't use it very much 20 mil yeah 20 millimeter brown these are not silicone these are simply the painted ones but they're brown and I figured it's fall my wife loves fall colors I'm gonna be making her some stuff in some some you know browns and oranges and golden rods and things like that I got some small ones some of some of this size 15 millimeter and I've got a couple of these 20 millimeters so I don't use them very much but I went ahead and ordered two of these just to you know throw them over there in my inventory because I do I do have a few but I ordered I, I ordered two more of those so there's that Twenty millimeter. There we go, right there. Okay, now there's that. There's that. Wow, these things are big. I ordered these to see what these were all about. These are what they call. I've seen these, and I was like, hmm. And I ordered them. Does it? Okay, yeah. This is called a spring, like boingy boingy boing spring ring, a black one and a silver one. I ordered them just to see, and they said they're 26 millimeter, which is basically right at an inch. But these are a little bit more significant than I thought. The thickness of it itself, the 26 millimeters is across the. I want to say it's supposed to be the actual diameter of the space in between yes the space in between not the out the inside diameter not the outside diameter but I don't know if it had labeled the thickness of the metal like the gauge of the metal but that's pretty significant they were they were about they were a little costly for these things but I see why now they that's that's rather nice that's rather nice instead of like a carabiner for your keys you could use something like this that was my idea but I got a silver one and a black one just to see Now to put that on and off like your belt loop, if you know, like me, I hook. I got my keychain, whatever keychain I'm wearing that day. I hook it to a carabiner. And I've got a black one and a silver one for myself. And I got some in my inventory, and those are easy because the shape of it is a carabiner shape, like whatever shape you'd call that. And you can grab a hold of it and on and off your belt loop. These. It's yeah, not not gonna be so easy to do that because it's round and you're like, well, where's the where's the part at that do you get your thumb to? But it's still, you know, it's yeah. I just wanted to order them and see. I, I wanted to see. I've seen some of these smaller, but not quite this big. And I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize. Which I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I didn't know that the piece of metal itself was going to be so significantly thick that's nice though I mean for the amount I paid I mean how much were these things these things were like two or three dollars a piece That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, here. Let's get that off your personal keychain, Steve. That's not what that is. This is not personal stuff. This is good. Whatever. Okay, there's that.
Now, I ordered these. I've got some of these in my own inventory that I bought somewhere else. These are standard split rings. These are, I've got some over there that I use that are black and like silver. And I wanted to get some of these from Paracord to you because I ordered most of my stuff in there. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to order these things, when I do need some of these again, I want to see what kind Paracord you has compared to what I've ordered. That way, I don't have to spend people to go, uh, I don't have to just order these from one place in America that I know that sells them and they're nice quality. You order a you know, however many in a pack, and then you pay eight dollars for the shipping. Well, if I'm ordering all this stuff from Paracord to you, I want to see what these are going to be like. That way, I just order them from them when I put in an order. So I ordered. What are these? Spring ring, spring ring, stainless steel. Yeah, this is stainless steel. Stainless steel. 25 millimeter, which is split key ring, key split ring, and then this one is the 25 millimeter black. Now this one is not stainless steel; it's painted, the stainless steel one, which I want to say it cost a little bit more, and it is. It seems like, yeah, it is. It's thicker this way. You see what I'm saying? It's a little bit thicker. Yeah, it's stout too. This one, being that it's thinner, it's not going to be as stout. But that's not a complaint. That's just an observational fact. Yeah, those are not bad. Those are a little bit bigger than the ones I've ordered that I have in my inventory, which is no problem. But I got five of each. I figured out that whatever. I wanted to see. I, I, I love to get the thing, order it, see in my hand, play around with it, see what I can do with it, that kind of thing. Right? Okay, there's that. Okay. Wow. That can't be right. These, what these are, they look like they're the wrong size. I don't know though. That cord. Wow. Something something ain't right here. Either I ordered the wrong stuff or they sent me the wrong stuff. I think I ordered the wrong stuff. I don't know. Let's see. No. Hang on, give me a second, folks. No, that's right. It's just, okay, I see now why they do. Okay, what it is, I'll show you. They're end caps. Most of you may know what these are. These are pink silicone. That silicone coating like the buckles and stuff, they're end caps. It's just made out of, I don't know, brass, I guess. I don't know. But it's silicone. And it goes on the end of a piece of cord. It's like a, it's like a beauty ring or an excussion. Or, you see what I'm saying? Instead of having a chopped off bare piece of burnt cord, you put that on the end. You know, you glue it on the end and it's a... It's, it's an end cap. That's what it is. I ordered some pink ones. And I ordered some various other color ones. Purple. These are pink. And then turquoise. Purple, pink, and turquoise. Right. And these are all 10 millimeters. 
And I measured it. That's what they are. They just look small compared to what I'm going to show you. Okay, now, and I ordered these, too. I've been wanting to get some of these anyway. These, I ordered these for the dog leash type thing. If I can actually make one, I figured I wanted the hardware. This is what they would call a 60 millimeter. And I'm going to assume it's measuring from one end to the other. Let's see. Yep, 60 millimeters from one end to the other. And it's a lobster hook, a swivel lobster hook. These are, and it opens up really wide. But a pink one, a turquoise one, and this one is slightly different. This one was called the light, as in the weight of it. And you could tell, I could tell just by looking at it, it's not as beefy, and the swivel ring on the end is shaped slightly different. I mean, I knew all this was going to be like that, but it's still a 60 millimeter. And actually, it's just shy of 60, well, it's just shy of 60 millimeters. Does it say it's 60 millimeters on here? I don't know. Let's see. Purple in caps. Yeah, it says it's 60 million. I mean, that ain't, it's swivel. This thing is labeled a swivel eye clip carabiner, quote, light version, end quote, turquoise 60 millimeter. But I got it because these are the colors. Our dogs, our dogs harness is pink, so, right? And I figured these two colors go together. All these colors will go together, whether two of them, these two, these two, or whatever. Hence why I got the end caps or whatever, and you'll see in a second. But I got that, right? Just This is just me playing around, seeing, I'm going to see about trying to do this, and if I can, I'll order some more of this. Because we have a, here in our town, we have a big veterinarian clinic. And my hopes, my hopes is if I could make some of this and get good at it, I could potentially sell it to some of these people up there. Because I know, I've met a lot of these people. I walk in there, they, the, the technicians and nurses and vets, they know me because we have a lot of pets from this. <laughs> and the customers, I, I, you know, the other clients of the vet, they see me and they, you know, I'm, whatever. But maybe I can, yeah, you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to expand my, <coughs> expand my tents. Some of you will understand that. But there's all that. Okay, then I ordered these. These are the same swivel eye plants, but these are silicone. And one of them I got because I wanted it for me. I wanted it because, you know, it's black. It's a black 60 millimeter swivel clamp. That's actually kind of nice. Not sure what I'd do with it, but I got it. And then this one is the same thing. It's just pink. It's the same thing. It's just that pink looking color. Now I wanted to see this. Because in that picture, in the picture on the website, even though they're both pink silicone, which I've got some of these buckles back there that are the same, whatever, on their website where the picture was taken, it was actually two different colors of paint. Now that I have it in hand, it actually is two different colors of paint. Not much though. It's not. It's not like that's pink and that's pink. No, it ain't that that far off. But you know, it's a little off. But their website does show. It doesn't say anything about it being different. But when I go to buy this stuff, I look. I looked at these, 
And I looked at these, and I put I put the pictures right next to each other. And I'm like, it's slightly different color, but I don't care. But yeah, there's that. Okay. Now here's the thing that I ordered, and this uh, this stuff I'll tell you this. Like I said, this right here was a pre-spooled spool. You buy this, it was like bam for that. Now a lot of the stuff they said you buy it by the meter. I can buy one meter, which is basically equivalent to three feet. Or you can buy, you know, if you buy 30 meters or more, they put it on a spool for you, right? Um, That's paracord or microcord or whatever. But this dog leash rope, that's what I'm about to show you. That's what this was all about. I ordered this. I'm going to try to learn how to do like I showed you in that picture. Um, but I only ordered, how many meters did I order? I think like six meters, which is about 18 feet, 19 feet. Pastel pink. Okay, yeah. Let's see. Turquoise dog leash rope, 10 millimeter nylon. That's what this is. Now you look at it. I kid you not. This is a 10 millimeter rope. And that end cap is supposed to go on the end of that. Now, I've seen, I've watched the videos and tutorials, and I've been reading and looking, and it goes on there, but I see how, that when they go to do it, there's a technique, they, do, they whip around this, they do a whipping knot around this, and it constricts it. And, you know, obviously they cut off this burnt, hardened mushroom end, and then they put it on there. And... They daggum take the whipping off and it'll go on there. At least, hopefully it will. But my goodness, it just, I'm like, really? That end cap's gonna fit on that? It will. I hope. If not, I'll just order some bigger ones. I, I, I'm gonna assume I've got the right ones. But yeah, that's turquoise. And to you, that looks blue on the screen. Like I say, lighting, camera, all that stuff. But to my naked eye, that has more green to it. What you're seeing on film, it looks blue. But that's six meters, which comes out to about 18 feet. But it, it, it said it said it was soft and supple. It is. It's pretty soft and supple. But you know, it's thick. So, but it is. We're going to try this. I, hey, I may or may not be able to do this. Now, say this. They, like I was saying, they said this about a meter. Most of the paracord, it just depends. Between 30 and some of the reflective style, military spec, fish and, what do they call it? Fish and fire, that kind of stuff. It's up to 45, 50 cents per meter, right, for this. This stuff right here, yeah, it costs a little bit more per meter. But I got turquoise and pastel pink. We're going to try this. Hopefully I didn't just waste my money. And Even if I did, I'll, I'll use it. Even if I can't do this, which I won't give up, I'll, I'll eventually figure out how to do all this. So that's what all that was. Okay, now, the rest of it, just a couple of things. I ordered some other colors. I ordered this one. I've been wanting to get this one for a while. This is, what is it called? Espresso Brown. It's a dark brown. Very dark. I've got, over here by inventory, I've got Coyote Brown. It's a cheap quality Coyote. I don't use brown very much, but I've got Coyote Brown. It's a cheap quality cord I got somewhere. Then I've got um 
chocolate brown, and then I've got brown. And the brown I have is a polyester cord. Nothing against polyester, but I would, you know, I can work with whatever. When it comes to micro cord, I want it to be nylon. But when it comes to paracord, I can work with polyester. I would prefer it to be nylon, but you know, you work with, if you, if some colors you can't get in nylon, they only come in polyester. But this was one of the darker colors, brown in nylon. Espresso. There's that. Okay, now here's this. Wow, this color. Oof. This is ochre yellow. My intent, my, my, my intent, I don't know how well that's going to turn out, was for this to be like a fall color. I also got it in micro cord, or not micro cord, yeah, that is micro cord, isn't it? Yeah, micro cord. And compare it to gold and goldenrod. It's got more of a more of a it's yellow. It's definitely yellow, but it's got to my naked eye, it's almost got like a <laughs> I hate to say it a uh, baby puke green tint to it. It's got a little bit of green in there, it looks like. Not a bad color though. It's just most of the time when you you go yellow, yellow is just yellow. I mean they say, well that's banana yellow, that's this yellow. That's, they all almost look alike to me. This one is not that. But this looks more like a fall type color. That's what I got it for anyway. And that's it. That's all I got this week. Which I mean, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of stuff. But um, I'm gonna try like that picture. Yeah. Like that picture I showed. I'm gonna try to learn how to do that. You know, obviously I'm gonna have to start small. You know, like I said I know how to do whipping. No problem. Now, this was a two-strand whipping. And what they do is they'll use this. And I've even seen some keychain, key, chain, key chain type things. Where they'll take a piece of this and they'll form the bite. And that's where your split ring would go. And they'll get a piece of it, you know, however long. End caps on the end and they'll whip around it. A whip, and that's the thing, you whip around t both pieces. And all those lumps and bumps that are in this, those that stuff underneath it, all that extra cord where you have to tuck the ends in and pull it and all that kind of stuff, it gets laid in this little, little tiny space in between the two pieces of cord. You see what I'm saying? That way you have a smooth whip, so to speak. But I've seen people make keychains. But basically, they cut that off, end caps down here, and whip around this, you know, three or four inches of a whipping, colored, various, all that, and then they'll put their split ring or whatever they're going to attach to make the keychain. And I'm like, okay, I, I, maybe I can do that. <coughs> but there you go, that's what I got. We're going to see how this got, turns out. You know, wish me, you know, Good vibes, pray for me, whatever it is you do. Um, I'm a praying man myself. Um, but wish me luck. Hopefully I can do this. I don't know. I'm kind of intimidated now that I see the size of this cord in comparison. The 10 millimeter cord in, in comparison to these 10 millimeter end caps. I'm like, I'm supposed to fit that in there? Wow. Anyway, maybe I'll ask around and somebody will tell me. But anyway, I'm gonna, that's it. That's what I got. That's it. I appreciate you watching. Uh, suggestions for tutorials, as always. Um, 
let me know let me know put them in the comments below anything like that but i'll end this one like i end them all keep it neat keep it clean keep it tight happy weaving folks